I know I've been absent recently and I apologize for that. Hopefully I have some updates regarding that relatively soon. But for now, we've got a massive balance patch to go over. So much has just changed about DC Door Force and I can't wait to talk to you about it. There is a big balance patch on the horizon. At the time of me recording this, it's not actually out, but the developers have given some creators a little bit of a sneak peek and they've also given us permission to publicly talk about uh, those balance changes. So while I don't have any graphics for you, I don't have any proof, for what I'm talking about, I'm going to talk to you about the upcoming balance changes. Oh, and just as a heads up, every single change I talk about will be listed in the comment section uh, so that you can see them for yourselves because I don't have a written version of them on screen. You might want to see them written down. All right, let's get the big one out of the way. The very first thing mentioned in this paragraph about balance changes is Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman has been very publicly talked about as one of the strongest leaders in the game, if not the strongest leader in the game. And I have to concur, she was uh, quite strong, but she's received a pretty dramatic change now. Wonder Woman still has a two cost ability. Wonder Woman gets plus three attack instead of four and gives the recruit in front of her plus one plus one so she'll no longer have a wide ranging buff across her entire board she'll just target the recruit in front of her and now she gives it plus one plus one instead of just one defense overall this is a pretty big hit to wonder woman she loses one attack which is nothing to scoff at one attack is a huge difference and she only gives the recruit in front of her her buff now that buff is plus one plus one instead of uh plus one defense uh, so it is a little bit better of a buff but it, now it's targeted on one recruit but honestly the plus one attack isn't a huge deal in most cases you're going to care much more about that defense i still expect wonder woman to be the clear pick for tempo decks uh but wonder woman was so strong uh, that it felt like she was the obvious answer in the might category uh, especially post aquaman nerfs uh, it just felt like if you were playing might uh, the answer was probably Wonder Woman, uh, but now uh, it's less clear. Man, they changed a lot about Batman. We'll get into it, uh, but for now, the big thing you need to know about is that Batman has gone down to 18 defense instead of 19 defense. So he's a bit more squishy, he's a bit easier to target down. He's just one health away from what the Flash was, and I say the Flash was because the Flash has changed as well, uh, but for now, we're talking about Batman, and Batman has gone down to 18 defense as opposed to 19. Obviously, this doesn't feel like a major change, but we'll talk about some of the other things that got changed about Batman and the cards that you would run in a Batman list there. Some of it is uh, quite sad. Uh, if you're a Batman enjoyer like myself. The Flash. The Flash has gone from 17 defense up to 19. So the, obviously uh, the Flash is underperforming according to their behind the scenes stats, which makes sense. It lines up with what my expectations were. The Flash has never felt particularly strong. There is a couple decks that I think the Flash has a little bit of potential in. Uh, and now that he's gone up to 19 defense, he has even more potential in those packages because uh, he needed to be a bit more tanky. Good to see that. Um, I'm still don't think the flash is going to be quite there. I don't expect the flash to make any big uh, splashes on the meta. Uh, but only time will tell, especially as we see the contextual uh, meta shift that will happen uh, based on these balance changes. Uh, Lex Luthor is up next. Lex Luthor got a pretty dramatic change. I'm very excited about this one. Lex Luthor has gone from his current effect, uh, which only charges him twice when you sacrifice a friendly recruit. Now it charges three times. So if you use his ability to KO a recruit, a friendly recruit, you will get Lex Luthor's effect the following turn. Previously, the way you had to pilot Lex Luthor, if you intended to sometimes target a friendly recruit, is essentially wait until turn five instead of turn four, or six instead of turn five, depending on whether you're going first or second. And that way, uh, you would get access to the ability the following turn. But now, you don't have to go through that extra turn. Now, you can just use that on a friendly recruit and know that you'll still have access to the ability the following turn. So it's very, very good. Uh, lots of flexibility for Lex Luthor. I already thought Lex Luthor was the best tyranny leader, so uh, now I think he's uh, definitely uh, going to solidify that slot as the key main, you know, kind of default pick uh, for Tyranny. Uh, that's not to say, obviously, Poison Ivy and, and Black Adam don't have their, their place. If you're making a Tyranny deck and there's uh, not a specific reason to run Poison Ivy or Black Adam, Lex Luthor uh, seems like the obvious pick. Truth and Justice. It took the community a while to realize how strong this card was. Uh, Truth and Justice was an absolute nightmare. Uh, this card was so strong because it gives uh, plus two, plus two to your leaders. It so often would bridge the gap for the aggro player uh, in the aggro versus control uh, matchup that it felt impossible. In fact, I, I think in a lot of cases, it would actually be impossible for the control player to ever catch up. Uh, but now, uh, Truth and Justice has undergone a pretty dramatic change. Truth and Justice now says, give your recruits plus two, plus two, and shield so instead of interacting with your leaders in addition to your recruits it'll just 
target your recruits, and it will give them shield. So if you have a board, the payoff for Truth and Justice could be perceived as higher than what it was previously, but it doesn't have this everlasting effect if the control player does manage to deal with the board. I think this is actually a perfect solution for Truth and Justice. I think Truth and Justice will still be played in decks where it's obviously designed to see play, uh, but it won't just be included in every Might deck uh, because it's, it's just so strong, uh, which is the perfect desire uh, for the card. So very, very impressed with that change. Let's move on to Superman Robot. Where is he? There he is. Boom. Superman Robot is a 2-2 with the Shield and Guard. Uh, post uh, patch, it's going to be a 2-1. I still think Superman Robot is going to be quite good for decks that want to run him. I still think he's just going to be like a good default option if you're like looking for a bronze recruit and might. Uh, he's fine. But honestly, you have so many options for bronze recruit and, and, and might that he might just fall out of favor. I would say that a 2-1 with shield and guard is just kind of good. You can just plug it into uh, most things. But Might has so many good options. You've got Antiope. You've got Steve Trevor. You've got uh, Themyscarian Minotaur. All of these cards uh, don't really need a lot of context to show up in your deck. And then obviously the super strength combo with Superman Robot is so strong. And at, at post Wonder Woman um, nerf, so, uh, Wonder Woman won't be able to kill this even after you get through the shield if you've put super strength on it. But uh, it might actually fall out of favor just because the other options in the might faction are so strong. You've got your Antiopes, your, your Themyscarian Minotaurs, uh, all of these cards are quite, uh, even your Wildcats still, even post nerf Wildcats still pretty good. Amazonian Braces got changed. I'm actually pretty sad about this one because I liked Amazonian Braces quite a lot um, and I thought it was being underplayed. Like I didn't see very many people running it, but um, it, it got hit with the nerf. It now reads, give a friendly character plus three defense and aura as opposed to plus four defense. Pretty sad about that because, again, I was such a big uh, Amazonian Braces fan. But unfortunately, uh, it, it got hit with that that nerf. Uh, I don't think that's enough to kill the card. There'll still be decks that you want to run it in. Uh, if you if Hawkman and Hawk Girl ever becomes like a, a reliable package, uh, then Amazonian Braces will probably be a part of that package. I am pretty sad about this one. I'm going to be honest. Upgraded Bandage has gotten hit with a pretty substantial nerf. Previously, the upgraded bandage, let's pull up bandage. I can't pull up upgraded bandage, but I can pull up bandage. Wait, bandage is a, oh, because I have a free filter. There we go. Okay. Bandage, upgraded bandage used to previously draw you a card in addition to its base effect of healing a damaged character uh, for three health. Now, unfortunately, it does not draw you a card. Upgraded bandage now reads heal three damage from a character and give them plus one defense. So, Bandage Draw Card Engine is officially dead. What a sad time. Now, Batman is still going to be a way for you to draw cards with your um, uh, with your upgraded gadgets. I will say, I think Lucius Fox is no longer necessary for gadget lists. The upgrade advantage was so good uh, that it more or less justified running Lucius Fox in every deck that generates uh, gadgets or any deck that has Batman as a leader, essentially. Uh, but uh, honestly, with the bandage uh, memorial that's happening right now, I don't think it's necessary to run Lucius anymore. Obviously, that will uh, require some testing. But yeah, sad times for the the Batman package. I actually really liked the Batman package. I, so it's a uh, it's sad to see it go. And and don't get me wrong, I'm sure Batman will still be a fine. Uh, you find leader. I'm very curious to see how these changes impact the meta because they are so um, far reaching. They really target the early game uh, of DC Duel Force. So uh, excited to see how different the game looks uh, even just a couple weeks from now. Alfred Pennyworth got the next biggest hit. Alfred Penny nerf uh, no longer charges Batman, which is a dramatic change to his core uh, current design uh, he now reads deploy if you have a batman leader draw a card in addition to that he reads start generate a bandage so alfred bettyworth can still heal your leader quite a lot assuming he sticks around on the board and on top of those changes he's gone from being a 1-1 to being a 2-2 so while he got a stat buff, he got a pretty substantial effect nerf. I'm a little undecided on the new version of Alfred Pennyworth, and I'm going to have to try it out for myself before I give it any strong opinions. But my assumption is that he's still quite good in Batman lists. The question is a card that we often run uh, in, in Batman lists. And the question is more or less now just going to be a worse version of what you could be running with Alfred Pennyworth uh, in Batman lists. Obviously, if you're not running Batman, the question's uh, better than Alfred. But assuming you're running Batman, uh, the, the better options in, in a lot of cases is going to be an Alfred. Uh, but it's interesting now that if you have um, if you have Batman as your leader, you can now run five cards, five bronze cards that 
refill themselves in hand. Sorry, seven bronze cards that refill themselves in hand. We have Alfred. We have uh, Utility Belt. Uh, we have uh, Detective Chimp. We have The Question. Just some stuff to keep in mind. Commissioner Gordon got hit with a huge nerf. Commissioner Gordon has gone from being a 3-3 to being a 2-1. I just want to remind everybody that Commissioner Gordon in the original streamer beta was a 3-5. And now he's gone all the way down to a 2-1. How the mighty have fallen, Commissioner Gordon uh, is very vulnerable to effects like Batarang, any ping effects, pyromancy, these types of things. Commissioner Gordon's just dead to them now. Commissioner Gordon was very almost auto-include for me in a lot of cases. Um, not quite, but very, very almost auto-include in tactics lists. Him going down to 2-1 does dramatically alter the card. I think now I'm probably only going to run Commissioner Gordon in lists where I'm going to run uh, Batgirl. Maybe I still run it in Batman lists because you can like grapnel gun back the Commissioner Gordon and then play it again later, which will sometimes be very important, especially now that he's such a squishy uh, recruit and he can just die to so many things. You might just want to, rather than using him as a blocker, you just use him as a uh, as for his effect, bounce him back and then and replay him. He's much more comparable to a card like Speedy now, where previously uh, he was uh, just better than Speedy in a lot of cases. Batman, the Caped Crusader, which is the Batman that is generated from the the bat signal has seen a pretty big nerf it's gone from being a 6-6 to being a 4-4 that signal was one of my favorite tactics cards and it felt like a rewarding payoff and to me at least in gameplay and i don't know what their behind the scenes stats are obviously i can't make the same contextual changes that they can make you know they've they've got more information than i have to work with but it felt like t uh the payoff for more or less skipping an attack on a recruit because of bat signal the tempo payoff uh was worth the reward and it felt rewarding to go out of your way to, to do that and now I'm not sure it's going to feel as rewarding. This might be enough to just kill Bat Signal, uh, but of course, only time will tell. It's so hard to tell uh, with all of these changes because a lot of um, decks have lost a lot of tempo-oriented stuff now. So the meta might shift so dramatically uh, that the payoff for this is still worth it, despite the fact that Batman uh, the Cape Crusader has gone down uh, from being a 6-6 to a 4-4. The change to Batwing is relatively straightforward. It's just minus one defense. He now starts off at 3 3. I think this is a fair change. Batwing, by far and away, was one of the strongest cards in the gadgets package. Uh, and it still is. This is still going to be one of your big payoff cards, uh, but hopefully it'll be a little less egregious in some situations. It's still going to snowball. It's still going to get quite strong, but that's the design of the card. It's supposed to do that. It's supposed to be a threat that you cannot ignore, that you have to deal with, and it will still be that. Uh, so that's good. Uh, Devil's Knight. This is an interesting card to see changed. Devil's Knight just reads, give your recruits plus two attack and no longer says this turn. So Devil's Knight will retain its plus two attack. Bursting Boom Tubes just got better. Gotham Riots just got better. Uh, and anything that generates another recruit on board uh, just got better. I wonder if Devil's Knight now manages to find its way into Arkham inmate packages or even just non-Arkham inmate packages that are uh, aggressive at all. Man Bat has moved from being a 3-2 to a 4-1. It's a stronger removal tool now. It's a stronger deal damage to face tool now. Uh, it definitely feels like a buff, even though the card has definitely become uh, more vulnerable. It's like weakened it in certain areas of the game, uh, but also made it stronger in other areas of the game. So it's it's kind of a, a weird change to talk about uh, because it's neither necessarily good uh, or bad for the card. Parasite is up next. Oh no, I'm very, I haven't even read this yet. I'm very scared to read this. Parasite's one of my favorite cards in the game. Oh, thank God it was a buff. Okay, Parasite now reads deal two damage to two random recruits. Parasite gets plus one, plus one for each damage dealt, but he's gone down to a one, one. So he's, so he's lost uh, minus one, minus one stat, but he's gained one damage on his effect. This makes him so much better than he was previously. I'm very excited to get in there and play some Batgirl Anarchy lists and try to do some Parasite Mayhem because this card is absolutely nuts once it can deal two damage and it's even more crazy uh, once you can repeat the deploy effect. Very happy to see this change. Big fan of this. I'm going to go play some Parasite as soon as this patch drops. Whack a man is up next. Wacker Man just has plus one damage on it now. It's a cool buff to see. Honestly, I thought Wacker Man was already quite good. Lightning Arc now reads deal five damage to an enemy and one damage to each adjacent enemy. So it's a much stronger single target removal card and it can be used to ping away stuff like Aura. And also you could use this as a burn option if you wanted to run stuff like Black Manta, uh, Lightning Arc, Living Lightning, all in the same list. That's a lot of ways of dealing five damage to the enemy leaders. 
very very scary amount of burn tools uh now in the game so keep your eye on lightning arc uh it might have just gotten a lot better the green lanterns have gotten huge buffs this is it guys i think the day has come for the green lantern package i think we're finally here especially with some of the contextual changes throughout the rest of the game uh you know your wonder woman changes that type of thing it might be time for the green lanterns to rise chip has seen a massive change chip is a much better card now chip now reads deploy you may pay Pay a bronze resource to give chip and a random green lantern in your hand plus two plus one and aura now you might be thinking what is the big change there nothing it's just plus one attack the big change is that chip is now a free recruit now he's going down to being a one one so he's lost minus one minus one stats but he's now a free recruit and gives plus two plus one and aura this is a huge buff uh when you consider the recent chase along changes as well jessica cruz and simon baz also received big buffs or well, not necessarily buffs it's again it's kind of weaker in some situations kind of stronger in other situations jessica cruz has gone down to being a one four as opposed to being a two three and now gives a plus four attack as opposed to plus three attack and the same thing uh happens for simon baz just in reverse he's now a four one and gives plus four defense as opposed to plus three defense these are big enough changes that you're now more incentivized uh, to use these effects on turn two uh, the payoff is larger uh, and that's good solstice got moved to a five five very happy to see that change i'm a big fan of this card i love the design of this card and now that she's a bit more tanky uh, she might be worth uh, running in a lot of packages back to the green lantern package john stewart sees a huge change he's no longer a three five he has the exact same effect but he is now a five Four. So before receiving a buff, John Stewart is already a solid removal tool, which is exactly where he needed to be. John Stewart was already one of the stronger Green Lanterns, and now he just got a heck of a lot better. Supersonic Punch. Excited to see what this change is. I haven't read this one yet. Ah, okay. So it's the exact same effect. It just now reads draw a card on the end of it. Yeah, solid effect. Um, definitely more interested in running this card than I was previously. I don't know if it's quite strong enough still, uh, but I'm way more uh, inclined to, to try it out than I was before. Lasso of Truth is now free. I don't know if you get away with running this card still. Even at being free, in a lot of cases, I'm going to feel like it's going to be dead in your hand. You're just not going to be able to do anything with it. I've been wrong before, though, but I don't think this needs to be a super meta defining card. It's just in a nicer place in the game uh, to have this card at free. Previously, I don't think there was any reason to run this card. Uh, at free, it's definitely more appealing. And maybe uh, you run like a Superman Doomsday list. And you go for lasso of truth to move something out of the way and you push for damage maybe you can do something like that that is probably the most appealing idea i've heard for lasso of truth uh, maybe we'll try something like that out that's actually kind of interesting metron got moved from being a 210 to being a 410 i love the design of this card and it's way more appealing to run now than it was before maybe this is play now maybe cyborg is uh the new route to go oh we could definitely run this in our cyborg batman package now uh deimos is now 2-3 as opposed to being a 2-2. Two, two. A pretty big buff for Deimos. Maybe even a little stronger than a lot of bronze cards now. Shadow's Blade now also gives the recruit that you buffed lethal. That's a little scary. Yeah, I like the new Shadow's Blade. I don't think it's particularly strong, but it is really difficult to say because the game might look very different uh, with all of these big changes coming to the game. The game might not be as tempo-oriented anymore, uh, so maybe Shadow's Blade you can get away with like playing a recruit and expecting it to live a turn rotation in the early game but that's probably not the case mm, i'm not sure i don't have any strong opinions on this one just yet now indoctrinate got a huge change indoctrinate previously read summon a silver recruit from your opponent's deck in the front row uh and give them god i actually really liked the design of indoctrinate uh, but it's changed it's actually completely reworked it's no longer the same god it's still a silver uh, but it reads put a non-gold enemy recruit into your deck uh, so not only do you steal the card from them but you remove it from the board so this is another removal option now for tyranny so it's nice that they have access to more removal more removal options is great for um the tyranny faction who uh, is designed to be like the control archetype uh, very clearly but it was missing a handful of uh control options and this is now going to be one of them this is going to be core for any deck I think that wants to run uh, this kind of control oriented play style. It's just a shame that it's coming at the cost of losing the current indoctrinate uh, because I think this indoctrinate's really fun, but uh, it is what it is. Maybe we'll see this version of indoctrinate return in the future uh, through some expansion or something like that. That's it for all the changes. That is so many card changes. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the upcoming card changes. Keep being awesome and I'll catch you in the next one.